It's good to be back. <laughs> and we thank God. We know that uh, every pandemic, every calamity, every war that we engage in, they have expiration, right? Even sickness, they have expiration. But our faith, it does not expire. Amen. Amen? So let us continue to hold on to this faith because we thank God because He is faithful. Though sometimes uh, we fail Him, but you know, God is not faithful because we are faithful. God's faithfulness to us is not based on our faithfulness to Him. Okay? God's faithfulness depends on himself, on his word. He is faithful to himself. He is faithful to his word. That's why he is, he is faithful to us. Okay, so, uh, and we have that confidence. And uh, because God knows our frame. He knows that we fail him. He knows... Uh, that we are not always strong. That's why we thank God because He is beyond all these, uh, all these weaknesses that every one of us has. And uh, He's also, you know, a great God. Just a great God. Not greater than anything, but just a great God. And uh, we cannot equal him to anyone or to anything. And uh, I really thank God for that. We've been hearing a lot of things around the world. Thank God. Um, let's just continue to pray for, uh, you know, uh, U.S. Uh, for their smooth transition after the election. Let's continue to pray for the Philippines. Okay, we know that uh, we have a lot of... Uh, Family, friends, and relatives in the Philippines who are suffering right now because of the typhoon. And uh, let's also continue to pray for peace here in Thailand. The reason that the Lord raised his churches is not only for us to enjoy, you know, uh, the life that is so blessed by God. The Lord also raised uh, the church so that we can be... Um, we can be a blessing to the nation. So uh, I believe that our prayer continue to work. Every time we pray for the nations, we pray for our family, relatives, and loved ones, even friends. As we pray for the nations, let us continue to believe that God can hear us. Amen. So let us continue to hold on. Regardless of what we are going through, Regardless of the news that we are hearing every day, let us continue to hold on. Do not shrink in your faith, but let us continue to believe. Amen? Because, you know, the world is so uncertain. The world is so um, uh, dark. And if we still, you know, do not believe that God can uh, save us from all these things, then... Uh, what will happen to us, okay? At least we have this comfort in our minds that at the end of all these things, we will continue to live with God, and that will be uh, for eternity. And, you know, that's what we are all waiting for, the life to eternity with God. Amen. So this morning, I just want to... Uh, Continue also with the lesson that uh, our brothers, Del and Joms, uh, have been sharing for the past weeks, okay? This is about, you know, going out and sharing our faith, okay? Because I believe, we believe as a church that uh, we need to continue what the Lord Jesus Christ has started when he was still here on earth, okay? When he was still here... Okay, he was busy saving people. He was busy healing people. He was busy telling everyone the hope that they have in the Lord. And then when he left, okay, he has this command that we will continue the work. 
Okay, the, the, the word said, go and make disciples. We will continue what the Lord has started. Okay, he finished everything that could be finished. We will just claim, okay, the things that, uh, that remain unclaimed, okay, because um, the Lord wants us to be a partaker, a partaker of his work and of his suffering. Okay, can I just pray before we go on? Lord, thank you for this day, God. Thank you that we can still come to church. Thank you that we can still find comfort and strength, Lord, knowing that you are faithful. Thank you that we have our brothers and sisters. Thank you that even our children have their own time knowing you and growing in the knowledge of you. Thank you for this fellowship. Thank you that we can have this communion with you. And yes, Holy Spirit, we are so dependent on you. Speak into our hearts, God. Lord, your servant is limited. Your servant, God, is... Uh, Lord, your servant's words are not enough, O oh God, to give us an understanding of the things of the Spirit. But if you will breathe upon us, God, the understanding that we need... Lord, I believe, Lord, that all of us, God, will, will come to know the truth and will come to grow more in you. So, Lord, tonight, God, I just lift up to you all of us here in this room, even our kids who are having their own study of your word. Lord, breathe upon us, God, the understanding that we need. And that, Lord, we will not go home the same way we came here, God. And uh, just as much as we have been singing, Lord, that we need your touch, we need to encounter you once again, and that we need, Lord, to know that you remain God, Lord. In the midst of all these things that's going on around us, you are still God, seated upon the throne. And Lord, uh, you are just waiting for your time, the time when you come back and take, Lord, everyone who is your own. And we are all waiting for that day, God. That is our great day. That is our glorious day. And so tonight, God, I, I pray that you will continue to find us faithful listening to your word, that you will continue to find us faithful, God, hungry for you. Lord, longing for more of you. And even as we study your word, O oh God, let your word speak into our hearts. Holy Spirit, we just depend on you. We bless you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. I have this one question. Okay. Uh, and uh, from this, I will, uh, I want us to learn this evening. Are we the main reason why Christ came, suffered, died, and the reason he will return again? What do you think? Are we the main reason? Yes? yes. Okay. Thank you for that answer. But the answer is no. Okay. Because the main reason why he came is to fulfill the will and the plan of God. That's number one to Jesus Christ. It's not us. Okay? That's why sometimes, you know, we feel like it's okay to delay my yes to God. It's okay to delay my commitment to the Lord. Because anyway, that's the reason why Christ came, why he died, why he suffered. Because of me. What a selfish attitude. Right? Remember that the center, okay, everything is centered to Jesus Christ. Everything is centered to God, not to us. Never in our faith or never in the Bible that the focus becomes us or the person or men. No. The center, everything is centered to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, because he is here. Okay, he came here to fulfill the plan of God, that's number one for him, okay? And number two is to live in obedience to God because that's what Adam failed to do, 
Okay? When God created Adam and Eve, he expected them to obey him, but they failed. And so Jesus came to redeem okay, what the first man and the first woman failed to do before the Lord. So he lived in obedience to God and lived with an unbroken relationship with a father. Because when Adam and Eve disobeyed the Lord, okay, our relationship, all of us, our relationship with God was broken, okay? And, uh, and there was no reconciliation that's taking place. No matter how, you know, man effort or strive to, rec- to be reconciled with God, there's no way, okay, that uh, we can be reconciled with God. But with Jesus Christ, okay, that's why he is the perfect sacrifice because he lived and while living, he did not break his relationship with God. And the third is to suffer and die for man's sin. Then to bring salvation to us, to reconcile God and man, and to bring redemption to all creation. Okay, redemption is not only for us, but for all the creation that God has, you know, has made. All the creation, heaven and earth, okay, that's what Jesus Christ did. He, he redeemed all this, or the final redemption is on his second coming. Okay, he will redeem everything back to the creator. And finally, to glorify the Lord. Okay, so remember this. If, you know, all your life you thought that Jesus Christ came for you and me, and so we can delay things anyway, God will wait. That's the reason why he died. Okay, then, okay, he will wait. No, that's not the truth. Okay, that's, uh, you know, that's the effect or the result of uh, imagining things or thinking what is ideal. Okay, but that's not really the reason. Okay, because Adam failed what God wants him to fulfill. Okay. And uh, Jesus did that. In Matthew 28, 19 to 20, and I believe most of us uh, can memor- already memorize these verses because this is our vision, the church vision. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Do you memorize that verses? Some of you. And what is the vision? Uh, Matthew 19, verse 28. Hmm? Uh, uh, Matthew 20. 20. <laughs> no, we guess. But it's Matthew 28. Okay, that's almost the end of Matthew. I am grateful for that command. No, I'm grateful for that command. Because if Jesus did not give the great commission to his disciples, all of us are not here. This command is specifically commanded for us Gentiles. Who received the commission? Who who received the great commission when Jesus instructed this? Who received this first? His disciples, right? And his disciples are from Israel. Why are you doubting your answers? (laughs) Because you failed with the first question. (laughs) Now you lost confidence. Okay. So the first batch of people who received the Great Commission are the disciples, right? When Jesus was here on earth, okay, he was busy saving the Jews. And even, you know, he even told the disciples, do not go to the Gentiles. No, never step on the Gentile, on Gentile ground. Okay, you stay here. Okay, until such time that he commanded his disciples, go and make disciples of all nations. Now we are included. And if the disciples did not obey that great commission, I don't think... Even one Gentile can receive salvation from God. That's, the, that's why it's really a great 
commission. It made an opening. It opened the door for the, you know, for everyone, for the rest of the world. Okay? That salvation will also be shared to the Gentiles. That we are included to the plan of God for salvation. So, you know, sometimes we have an attitude like, you know, uh, people will really be saved because the Lord will look for them and the Lord will really offer them his salvation. You know, it's not like that. That's a myth. Okay, that's a myth that we used to believe. That's why we thought we can just take for granted, you know, all the invitations of the Lord to us because anyway, he's willing to wait for us. That's not true. And we thank God for the Jew, okay? These people who receive this uh, instruction, this commandment, they are all Jews, J-E-W-S, okay? <laughs> they are Jews, okay? And they were commanded by Jesus Christ to go and make disciples of all nations. That's why the gospel reached many nations of the world. They are the first missionary, of Jesus' gospel to the whole world. Right? And then when it was, you know, when we all got born again because of, you know, the, the sharing of the gospel, now we also receive the same command. Go and make disciples to the rest of the world. But we thank God for the, you know, obedience of the first disciples. We thank God for the obedience of these um, is Jews who are, you know, discriminated. Actually, they are they were discriminated during their time because uh, people said they don't know anything. They're just fishermen. They are sinners, tax collectors, and so on. And uh, what could they say about the scripture? But you know, the Lord empowered them. That's why Jesus Christ told them, "Don't go yet to any Gentile ground. Wait until the Holy Spirit." come upon you. And when they received the power of the Holy Spirit, that's the time they were able to go and start sharing the gospel. Okay? They cannot share it unless the Holy Spirit comes upon them in power. Okay? They already received the Holy Spirit. When Jesus Christ resurrected, Jesus Christ uh, said in John 20, receive the Holy Spirit. They receive it. But in Acts 1.8, they have to wait for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit so that they can begin the ministry to the Gentiles. Okay, now, I don't want us to be confused about the Jews and the Gentiles. What are these words? Okay, these are important words so that we can appreciate more what the Lord has done for us, okay? There are two kinds of seed. One is the seed of righteousness through Abraham, and the, and the product of that is, the, is Israel or the Jew. And the seed of unrighteousness, everyone. And uh, <laughs> it agreed. <laughs> okay, it always happens. Okay. Okay, go back here. <laughs> yeah, the band still wants to play. Okay, so everyone is a Gentile. Are you a Gentile? Yes, yes. okay, that's a sure answer. Everyone is a Gentile. If you are not a seed of Abraham, okay, physical, we're talking about literal, okay? If you're not a seed of Abraham, you are a Gentile. And uh, there are only two kinds of seed in the Old Testament. Either you are an Israelite and you know God, or you belong to the rest of the world. You are a Gentile. Okay, and what is the difference? Let's start with the seed of Abraham, okay? The righteous seed, okay? <clears throat> what made Abraham righteous? He believed God. Okay, that's the only thing that he did. He believed God. He has faith in God. And then from Abraham, he has a son, Isaac. And Isaac also believed in God. So the seed of righteousness 
continued with Isaac. Then Isaac has two sons, Esau and Jacob, but Jacob alone believed in God. Okay? And then Jacob has 12 sons. And uh, that, those uh, 12 tribes or 12 sons, they became the nation Israel. But only Jacob with Benjamin, okay, believed in God. And they became the Jew that we knew today. Okay, so from 12 sons, only two remained in the Lord. And the 10 tribes, that's what they call now the lost tribes of Israel, we don't know where are they may be. Some of you here, you are a seed of, uh, of Rio Ben, you're a seed of, yeah, Issachar. Yeah, I think there, we have one here who is claiming to be a seed of Abraham. <laughs> you don't know him. <laughs> okay. They became the Jew that we know today. That's the tribe of Judah and Benjamin. Okay, and they are the ones who remained in the Lord. But something still happened to this seed. Okay, so uh, that's, how, that's how the seed of Abraham went on until the time of Jesus Christ. Okay, Jesus Christ also came from the tribe of Judah. Okay, and he's considered a Jew. Now let's look at the Gentile. What are the Gentiles doing during the time that Abraham and all the rest are knowing God? They worshipped idols. Okay? They worshipped idols. Only the Israelites do not worship idols during that time. Because the Lord commanded them. Okay? Hear this, Deuteronomy 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. So you must love him with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. There is no other God but God. Worship him only. Okay? While the rest of the world, they worship idols. They offer their children as sacrifices to their gods. That's what they are busy doing. Three, they also have kings. Okay? Other than worshiping idols, they have wicked kings that they serve and worship as their gods, you know, idols started with kings, okay? And these kings, they have priests or priestesses. And these, uh, these people became the gods, okay? They became gods of the ancient people until, you know, uh, idolatry developed, okay? So everyone is worshiping the sun, the moon, the trees, everything, Okay, everything that they can worship. They know God, but they choose wickedness over God's holiness. And lastly, God gave them to their evilness. That's what God does, you know, when we choose, when we always choose what is not right. When we keep on choosing wickedness, even though, you know, we are being counseled, choose this. You are being counseled. This is what the Lord is saying. But you keep on choosing what is wicked. You know what? The Lord will give you to wickedness. And your heart will be hardened. Have you encountered some people that, you know, they are just bad before, but now they are wicked. And their hearts are hardened already. The Lord will harden their hearts. The Lord will give them to their evilness. Okay? And then what happened next? This is what happened during that time. So the Gentiles just continue with their, you know, wickedness. They do not know that their sin will surely bring them to hell. They are ignorant about this. Their minds are closed. They are totally clueless about their ending, and they continue worshiping idols, okay? And they worship people in power. You know, that's why they love their kings, even if their kings are wicked. They love their kings because they look up to people in power. And they are entangled in the world. At the same time, they are slaves, Slaves to evil, slaves to wickedness, slaves to their kings, slaves to their priests, okay? And they are totally lost. So, you know, that's what's happening in the world, even from the old times, that this is what's going on. And I believe until today, 
Okay, we can still experience this kind of unrighteousness in our midst. And while this is happening to the Gentiles, the righteous seed, okay, they are what? Awaiting for the Messiah for their salvation. They have that in their hearts. The Lord gave them a promise about that. That a Messiah is coming to save them. That's why, you know, even if uh, they are suffering, the Bible said in Hebrews, uh, they died believing what was promised, okay? They died believing that a Messiah is coming to save them. They are awaiting for the Messiah for their redemption, Okay, they want redemption. They want to be redeemed. Because even though they, they believe in God, they know God, they still suffer because, you know, everyone in this world is really ending. Okay, uh, when sin entered the world, death entered the world, corruption entered the world, sickness entered the world. So they're also waiting for their redemption. They are awaiting for the Messiah to receive eternal life. And you know, even, even the unbeliever, all of us in the world, people want uh, to have eternal life. They do not want to die. Okay? And I think that's everyone's deep desire that we will not die. And that's one of the promises. We will not die. We will leave this body only to be given a new body. A body that will no longer experience pain, sickness, or whatever discomfort. That's the promise of God if we will continue to believe. Okay, so we will have eternal life with him. They are waiting for the Messiah for the resurrection of the dead. They believe that their departed ones, those who are righteous, will one day come back to life. And they will continue to live forever with them. They believe that. And they are awaiting for the Messiah to reign as promised by God. This Messiah will be their king this Messiah will rule. And when he rules, okay, he will rule in righteousness. They are waiting for that. And while, you know, while the Israelites were given by God all these promises, they were given the law, okay? But the law, the purpose of the law is so that they will know that they are really sinning against God. Okay, that's the purpose of the law. It is not expected to be fulfilled. No one can fulfill the law. But it was given to them so that they will realize they are really falling short of the glory of God. So while the Gentiles are doing all this, they are putting their faith in God. But what happened after that? Okay, so still the Gentiles' status are like that. But Israel, what happened to Israel? They become an unfaithful seed. Israel and Jew. They also worshipped idols. They started worshipping idols. How? They mingled with them. Okay? They, they marry their daughters. And these daughters are loyal to their idols. And the men of Israel, okay, just went on and, you know, copied the rest of the Gentiles. They did everything that the Gentiles do. They also desired to have a king. Like all the other nations of the world, that's why they have the first king that they have, Saul, King Saul, okay? The very insecure King Saul, okay? They, because they want to be like the other nations of the world because only Israel has no king because God is their king. But they are surrounded by nations who have kings and they envied them. And so they demanded, give us a king. Okay, and you know, the Lord was so grieved, but anyway, you want a king? Okay, here's your king. And though they know God, they just practice religion and stopped worshiping God. And lastly, God gave them to their evilness. Now the righteous seed and the unrighteous seed became equal. You know, this is the pride of the Jews. They know that in all the world, they are the only ones who are, you know, believers of God. And they feel that the rest of the world will be, you know, thrown into hell except them. That's their pride. 
Okay? Their pride is that we are special. We are chosen. We are children of Abraham. And because we are children of Abraham, we will not experience death. We will not go to hell. Because we are children of Abraham, but that's wrong. And that is absolutely wrong. They were wrong for that uh, kind of thinking. Because the Bible said, what shall we conclude then? Do we, okay, Jew, have any advantage? Not at all. For we have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under the power of sin. Okay? Everyone is now the same. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Okay? Everyone, when we say everyone, now there is no distinction between the seed of Abraham and the seed of unrighteousness. Everyone just became unrighteous because, you know, they mix. They mix. And uh, now there is no prevailing righteousness. Everyone just became unrighteous. There will be trouble. There will be trouble and distress. For every human being who does evil. First for the Jew, then for the Gentile. You know, the Bible said judgment starts in the house of the Lord. Okay? The Jew will be judged first and then the Gentile. And that's what happened. Okay? Trouble and distress. You know, before the world is, you know, has experienced all these calamities and all these uh, uh, problems, the Israelites have been suffering because of their sins. They were exiled, they became slaves, they were killed, they were what? Until today, they've been suffering. And I think, uh, you know, uh, the suffering that they have is really incomparable as well to the suffering of the rest of the Gentiles. Because why? Because that's not supposed to happen to them. You know, when you, when you make a poor person suffer, that's easy. He's exposed to suffering, right? But if, if you make a rich person suffer poverty, that's double pain because they're not exposed to that. And that's what happened to Israel. The pain is double. The misery is double. The suffering is double to them. Okay? There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil. First for the Jew. They were judged. You know, they are supposed to be the chosen people of God. They are supposed to be a special people. But the Lord judged them. And, uh, but the Lord gave them hope. Also in Romans, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, okay? because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. So, you know, Jesus Christ made sure that he built the faith of the Jew, his disciple. He made sure that, you know, their faith... Uh, rose within them, they started to believe God again, and when they received it in full, they were commanded, now go to the rest of the world and preach the gospel. That's the reason why we are all here now. We receive the gospel because of the Jew who first received salvation from Christ. So salvation comes first to the Jews, then to the Gentiles. Okay? Now, this is the grace of salvation. Everyone sinned and will die, but everyone, okay, the grace of salvation, but everyone can also be saved through Christ. Okay? In Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Okay? So everyone, that is given not only to the Gentiles, but also to the Jew. Okay, I, 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 uh, I will start this lesson first to the Gentiles because we are Gentiles. But uh, on the next Sunday that I will be preaching, I will be preaching also about the evan evangelism of the Jew. And I think 
you know, that is very relevant to us as a church. Number two, we don't know who will and who won't be saved. Okay? Because, you know, it, it, it is the call of God. Salvation is the call of God. So we just keep on sharing. We just keep on sharing because we don't know who will be saved and who will not. People will refuse, but people will also accept. We don't know. But even those who accept, we don't know if they did really accept. But we just share to them. And we do not get tired sharing because that's the command given to us. Okay? And we are a product of that command. Right? I, I really thank God. You know, when I am meditating, uh, when Jesus Christ commissioned the disciples, go and make disciples to all nations. And I really thank God. God, thank you. It reached Asia. <laughs> the gospel reached Asia. The gospel reached North, South America. The gospel reached Africa. The gospel reached Middle East. Thank you, God. Thank you for the disciples who obeyed. And, uh, and so we desire to also obey the Great Commission. Number three, <clears throat> it is God's desire that everyone will be saved. Okay, take note of that word, desire. It is his desire. Okay, but it doesn't mean everyone will be saved. God desired that because he's a good God. How God wished that everyone will be saved, but not everyone will be saved. But he desired that. In 1 Timothy, it says, this is good and it is pleasing in the sight of our God of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. God desired that. Okay? But not everyone will believe. But we will keep on sharing because we do not know who will be saved and who will not be saved. Next, in Romans 10, 13, Jesus can save everyone. The Bible said... Because everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Those who call on the name of the Lord. It's not about those who go to church. We come to church as a result of what we believe. Okay? Not because we want to receive salvation. We come to church because we already believed. And lastly... But not everyone... Will, okay, look at this. It is God's desire that everyone will be saved. And Jesus can save everyone, but not everyone will be saved. That is in, in Luke. See to it, you know, that uh, you strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. So imagine if we will not be able to enter, okay? That's a, that's a big problem. <clears throat> there is a story of Jesus Christ. It was Jesus who shared this story, the parable of the great banquet, okay? It says here, a man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. Listen to that. He sent invitations. No one can just come to the wedding banquet and uh, gate crush, okay? You need to receive an invitation. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell the guests, come, the banquet is ready. But they all began making excuses. One said, I have, bought, I have just bought a field and must inspect it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five pairs of oxen, and I want to try them out. Please excuse me. Another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant returned and told his master what they had said. His master was furious and said, go quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and invite the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. After the, the servant had done this, he reported, there is still room for more. So 
His master said, Go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. For now, none of those I first invited will get even the smallest taste of my banquet. You know what? Although salvation comes by faith, you have to believe to receive it, right? But, but you know, salvation does not come because the Lord has been waiting for you to say yes. It does not come like that. That's why I said, you know, sometimes we delay things. When the Lord is speaking to us, we delay because we think that God is a compassionate God. He is gracious. He will be waiting for me. No, he won't. This is one of the examples of the attitude of God to those he gave invitations to but not responded. Okay? He, he sent invitations to many. But a lot of people make excuses. Oh, sorry, I'm busy with this. Sorry, I'm busy with that. I tell you what, the invitation will not be insisted on you. Instead, what did the master said? Find other people. Okay, even those who are not supposed to be invited, let them be invited now. That's why, you know, the first to be invited are the Jews. And they refused Christ. John 1 said, he came to, which, to, to, to his own, but his own did not recognize him. And so the master said, then, you know, bring everyone on the street, on the countryside. Bring them in. Okay, send the invitation to them. You know, that's why sometimes, like what I said, we just keep on sharing. Because we don't know who received an invitation from God. A person can only respond to God because the, the Lord has already invited him. And a person cannot say yes to God because there's no invitation. You know, the, the initiative will come from God, not from us. It's not our decision. You will not say, yeah, I know that uh, I've been invited in the church, but I'm, I, I'm refusing. It's okay. It can wait. Hmm. That's not biblical. That's not biblical. That's not even biblical. Okay? Because when the Lord sent his an invitation, the Bible said, those who have ears, let them hear. Okay? Because uh, it was given, you have to respond. And in, in, uh, in Daniel 12.1, at that time, Michael, the archangel who stands guard over your nation, will arise. Then there will be a time of anguish greater than any since nations first came into existence. But at that time, every one of your people whose name is written in the book will be rescued. In heaven, there is a so-called book of life. And everyone who was invited and responded... Your names are there. And the reason why, you know, you are invited, because your name is actually already there. Okay? Names are already written even before the creations of the world. Okay? And sometimes, you know, people will think, oh, that's unfair. That's unfair because it was already written. What if my name was not really there? <laughs> that's how we think, but that's not how the Lord thinks. Okay, don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. And you know, and this is my comfort for those uh, people that I am reading, you know, those people who have no identity. We have so many of that from Myanmar and from other nations. They were not given identities. They were not given, uh, they were not registered in a certain nation. They are just uh, existing but no identity. And my only comfort is this, the gospel reached them. And though they are not register, registered here on earth, if they receive Christ, their names are registered in heaven. Okay? They still belong to the registered names. Okay? Rejoice that your name is registered in heaven. Okay? But there are also people's names who are not recorded. It says in Revelation 17, 
and the people who belong to this world whose names were not written in the book of life. That's scary. Before the world was made. So there are names that are written before the world was made, and there are names that are not written. Okay? And in Revelation 20, verse 15, and anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. So, you know, we need to make sure of this, that our names are written in the book of life. Are you assured of that, that your names are written in the book of life? Okay. So if you receive an invitation from God, do not refuse. Do not, you know, do not make fun of it. Okay, in 1 Corinthians 1.18, the Bible said, The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So, you know, you will continue to hear people thinking that what you are telling them is just foolishness. You know, it's as if, you know, you, you become a laughing stock for sharing to them the gospel, but still share anyway. It's not about them. It's about our obedience to God. We want everyone to be saved because that's the desire of God. So that is also our desire, that everyone will be saved, but it is up to God who will receive him. Okay? He will give an invitation, but if the person refuses, we cannot do anything about that. Okay? So salvation comes by invitation to believe. And salvation is free. And we need to share this salvation to many. And I want to end with this story of a demon-possessed man from Gerasenes. Gerasenes. I forgot that. Okay. Okay. And this man is out of control. He's demon-possessed, and he's living in the tombs, okay? And at night, he will howl or uh, he will make scary noises. And even if the town people will, will uh, shackle them, will, will chain him, he can break free, okay? He, he is just so uncontrollable. Okay, this is a Gentile, Gentile place, Okay, this is a Gentile place. That demon-possessed man is a Gentile. And, uh, you know, when Jesus would share to the Jew, okay, he will tell that person, come and follow me. Okay, but when he shares to the Gentile, he will tell the Gentile, return home and share to your family. And so this demon-possessed man was, um, you know, just imagine him living in the tombs. Okay, and um, naked and scary. Okay, and no one is already, no one is owning him. He has no family already. No one, um, no one is just uh, caring about him. And then Jesus Christ came, and uh, this man was set free. Okay, he was, uh, you know, he really came to his senses. He was totally free, totally healed. And the town people got so scared. They were scared that this man got healed. Okay? They were scared. This town, you know, is a place where people are just contented with things. They just let things be. They do not want any change. Okay? Even, you know, having someone who is so miserable and suffering, living in the tombs, now free and healed, they don't care about that. Okay? They just want things be. They don't want, they don't want any changes to happen in their town. Okay? So when they realize that Jesus Christ is healing demon-possessed men, they ask him, please go away. We don't need you here. Just go. Okay? And when the town people ask Jesus to go away, this demon-possessed man who is now healed asked him, Can I come? I want to go with you. But Jesus told him, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. Okay? So Jesus told the demon-possessed man, Someone 
who experienced Jesus. And this is how we share. Something in us, you know, must have happened so powerful that it is obviously from God. Okay? Like this man. Okay? He has no hope. No one is owning him. No family. Okay? He's a Gentile. Maybe, you know, he also once worshipped idols until this, the evils of these idols possessed him and he became so crazy. He's so uncontrollable. Okay? And the, the, demon, the demon spirits possessing him, they are so strong. But Jesus can heal. And Jesus can deliver. And this is all our obligations. Okay? We are Gentiles saved by grace. Thank God for the first batch of disciples who obeyed Jesus Christ to go and make disciples of all nations. Now we have an obligation to our co-believer uh, in the past. Those who, do, who like us are worshiping idols. Those who like us are not worshiping, not knowing God. Okay, now Jesus Christ arrived. And one of the best examples that he can do for us is to set us free from our chains, set us free from all our shackles, set us free from our craziness, and resurrect us to a new life. This demon-possessed man experienced resurrection of life. And Jesus told him, return home. It doesn't mean return to your family because he has no family already. But Jesus said, return home. Go back to your country or go back to your, to your uh, village. Go back to your city. And tell everyone what you have received, what the Lord has done. And you know, that's how easy it is to share Christ. Are you a product of God's grace? Are you a product of God's power? Are you a product of God's absolute truth are you enjoying the life of being free a life of having God okay, are you like me a Gentile who received the gospel of Christ and is now serving the Lord because I am free I know that I have eternal life and I know God and I know that this God is faithful and I know that one day he is coming back he will return for everyone who believes and then he will reign for us and we will, he will we will reign with him this is something you know that we cannot just neglect all of us are called to share the gospel and to obey it as much as the first disciples obeyed we have an obligation to fulfill and that is to go and make disciples we are all witnesses here we are all witnesses of Christ's power. We are all witnesses of Christ's uh, blessings. We are all a life resurrected. We were once dead to our sins. We were once hopeless when sickness strikes. We are all hopeless. Especially, you know, if uh, you do not have the resources. All of us, you know, our relationship in the past, we don't know how to handle but we thank God for the resurrection of life. We are all resurrected. And you know, regardless of how we, we encourage everyone to share the gospel, to harvest souls, unless you understand where are you coming from. We all came from this dead life. We all came from darkness as Gentiles. You've seen, uh, you know, what the Gentiles are doing. We don't have God. But now we have. And the Lord is giving invitations to those Gentiles. And we don't know them. We don't know who will respond. We don't know who will not respond. But at least we share. All of us. Amen. Can I hear an amen to all of us here? We want to see more people receiving resurrected life. We want to see more people realize that yes, Jesus already came. And Jesus is giving invitations to them. They are not receiving a church. They are not receiving religion. 
they will be receiving a Savior. A Savior who will give them the life that they are praying for. Eternal life, free from, you know, I'm not saying that when we get born again, we are already free from sickness, from suffering and all that. We still experience that. But the difference is that we have this comfort and this peace in our hearts. That though we are suffering, we're not alone. Because Jesus, or God, is with us. He can hear us. And I pray always, this church, that you know we receive this kind of burden. You are a product of someone's obedience. That's why you are here. Then, let someone else be a product of your obedience. Keep on sharing the gospel. Amen. Shall we all rise? Hallelujah. There is still great work ahead for the Gentiles. For those people who have been worshipping idols, who have been ignoring the Lord. The Lord wants to give them salvation. God wants to give them eternal life. But above all, the Lord is waiting for people like you and me who will obey the Lord's call to go and make disciples of all nations. This is not about growing a church. This is not about having more numbers in our services. This is about the heart of God for people. Because God desires that everyone will be saved. God desires that everyone will receive eternal life and not suffer in hell. And I pray, brothers and sisters of Oasis Church, I pray that the Lord will find us faithful to this call. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything He commanded us. And we can have this assurance that He will be with us to the ends of the age. Hallelujah. Father, tonight, I pray that we can all respond to this call. Thank you that we are a product of someone's obedience. And I pray, O oh God, that we will also be used, O oh God, so that others can also come to you. Let our obedience, Lord, result to others' salvation. Lord, this is the time that you are moving all of us. You are moving the whole church to receive this kind of heart from you. Lord, salvation will not stop in our lives. It must be shared to others. First to our family, like the Jew. Salvation started to them. They are the family of God that the Lord established. Then after them, outside. And the same with all of us here. Share the gospel to your family. Share to your loved ones. Share to your friends. But you do not stop there. And you, do not, you cannot force. Because it is God who gives them the invitation. We just pray that they will not refuse. But it will not end there. You have to go out and share the same love of God to others. Whether they receive or not, that's not our job. The only thing that God is requiring from us is to obey Him. And we will obey. Oh, shut up. Yes, God, give us that kind of heart once again. Give us the burden, Lord, 
give us the love for the lost, O oh God. Because like us, you desire, God, for them to receive your salvation. 